Well, a very warm welcome to all people here in the beautiful Victoria, and also a warm welcome to all our viewers online. It's a very special moment to be standing here today, um, and something we're very happy we can celebrate with you all. We've worked with a lot of dedication on this project, and we all have a deep-rooted passion to really make sure we preserve the beauties of the ocean. And therefore, we're very happy to say that our hard work has really made it all come together. Today here, we're going to announce proof of technology. And from that, we can really continue our operations to clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Now, before I go into the details of the project, I would just like to take a moment to thank the people and, and the parties which made it all happen today. This is a special thank you to all our followers, the supporters, the volunteers, our suppliers and partners, where I specifically would like to thank the offshore partner, Maersk, and the support of the Canadian and Dutch government. Thank you all for your collaborative effort to pull it all together and make this project a success. Now, a few times we have already mentioned, we have mentioned the term proof of technology. But what does this actually mean? In short, it means that we've completed a thorough test campaign with our experimental system number two with successful results. We have seen that the system safely interacted with marine life during the offshore campaign. We have also validated the data to confirm that this is a scalable solution. And most importantly, we have shown that we are capable to repeatedly harvest large amounts of plastic. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Those moments where you really see that much plastic come out of the ocean are very satisfactory to us all. Now, our experimental system number two deserved a nickname, and we named her Jenny. This comes from the Forrest Gump movie, which you all may know. And during a certain scene in the movie, Forrest, he buys an unnamed vessel, and he starts to try to capture shrimp. He is not successful in this, but then he decides to name the vessel Jenny. And after this, as if it's a divine intervention, he starts to capture loads of shrimp and his future really flourishes from there. Well, for us, system number two, we believed that was our Jenny. And it proved out to be the case. Of course, there is the part where Forrest captures shrimp and we capture plastics. And he needed a bit of fate and we had thorough design, engineering and research helping us along the way. Now, system number, uh, sorry, Jenny is the result of our technology development plan where we use fast cycle of learnings to really build on the lessons learned of previous offshore campaigns. She consists of two vessels, two Maersk vessels, which tow an 800 meter long retention system through the water. Plastic enters through the uh, open end of the system and is transported along the lines to the end part of the system. Plastic is prevented from escaping due to flotation parts on the top and a three meter deep netting arrangement below the water column. The plastic then transports along the sides to the retention zone, and this is where the plastic accumulates and is retained. This part is then pulled onto the back deck of the vessel and extracted here on deck. We carefully sort the plastics and make sure that they are safely stored in containers so we can offload these onshore for further processing. Now, the area we operate in, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, is huge. The system is, uses active propulsion, and this really allows us to cover a wide area of ocean, but it also helps us to keep the system in areas of high-density plastic. Um, Jenny's design philosophy was really, really built around the fact where we wanted to design for the best, but prepare for the worst. And our retention system was doing exactly that. We understand that she act, interacts with marine life, and we wanted to make sure that we were integrating mitigation measures to prevent 
uh, in unwanted interaction with marine life. But on the other hand, we wanted to be sure that we capture the plastic. Now, in preparation of our offshore campaign, we conducted an environmental impact assessment, which allowed us to uh, use mitigation measures during our offshore operations and prepare for a monitoring campaign, which we did offshore. Now, despite the, that we had a very positive outcome, we are going to continue the monitoring during future campaigns to make sure that we can continue to operate safely in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Now, Ginny's test campaign is now completed. The vessels have arrived here back on shore and we've captured 29,000 kilograms of plastic. We are going to shift from a testing mindset to a harvesting operation now, and we're going to continue our operations in the field starting tomorrow. Now, meanwhile, in the office, we are working on the design of the follow-up system, system number three. We want to expand the size of the system so we can effectively capture more plastic. And also our models show that if we have 10 of these systems, we will be able to clean the Great Pacific Garbage Patch effectively. Now today, I want to end my talk with giving credit where credit is due. Uh, all the successes you see here today are thanks to the great, exceptional and hardworking people at the Ocean Cleanup. The team here really works with full commitment and is very dedicated to our mission to clean the oceans of plastic. I thank them all for the hard work they do and I'm very proud to be part of this team. And finally, the offshore crew. These are the people who leave the comfort of their home and really go on an offshore adventure for a long period of time and have to deal in very challenging environment with the problems that are thrown upon them. They have shown during the test campaign great commitment, dedication and flexibility to pull it all together. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you to help me give the crew a warm welcome here back ashore. Please give a round of applause for the offshore crew. One more round for these guys, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, crew. Thank you very much, Hank. I would like to give the stage to our CEO and um, founder, Boyan Slat. Yeah. Ah, oh, what a... What a great day. Thanks, thanks all for, for being here. It's, uh, yeah, this is a day you know, we've all been looking forward to for, for all these years, uh, that I've personally been looking forward to for the past 10 years. So, yeah, it's just, uh, I kind of have to pinch myself that it's actually, um, yeah, the day that we've, you know, we've completed the testing, uh, we've achieved, you know, working system, proven technology, and that we're now going out uh, tomorrow to actually go and, and harvest, uh, harvest trash. So, it's uh, it's uh, it's really great. I think yeah. I think first and foremost, again, huge credits to to the whole offshore crew, not just these guys, but the guys who are still uh, on on the ships. Uh, they've uh, really did a tremendous job. Uh, it, life offshore is, is hard. I, I know some of them for sure have been offshore for the past 12 weeks, which is really hard to imagine. So yeah, actually I. I know your your hands are pretty sore now, but uh, I would like to ask for another round of applause for these amazing guys. So. So, yeah, so what you see behind us now in, in you know, the containers and still on the ship as well is the, the 29,000 kilos of trash that uh, has been collected during during the test phase. And yeah, this it's really when you, know, when you see it, and hopefully some of you will get the opportunity to see the trash in, in a bit, it's really hard to imagine that all that stuff just used to float out there, in the middle of the ocean, 2,000 kilometers offshore. It's, uh, it still would have floated out there you know, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, probably even 
100 years from now. This stuff is so persistent, and that's, of course, precisely the reason why we have to go and clean it up. I mean, you know, we don't want to do this, but you know, if, the ocean, if the plastic would just magically go away, that would be brilliant, but um, it doesn't. It's persistent, and I think that's why also there, you know, there should be no debate between, you know, should we do prevention, should we do cleanup? I mean, we have to do both. That's the only way to get back to clean oceans, and, of course, we are uh, doing both at the same time at the moment. So when you think about 29,000 kilos, of course, you, know, you might say, you know, what's 29,000 kilos? You know, that's a tiny amount. And yeah, of course, that's, that's true. It's, um, you know, it's compared to the 100 million kilos that are still out there. But um, you know, th of course, the point is, this was a test campaign. And that's why these 29,000 kilos are the most important kilos you know, we're ever going to collect. Because these 29,000 kilos prove to us that we can also collect the under 100 million kilos that, um, that, that are still out there as well. So ultimately, of course, we are returning now and we're going to scale this up as we go uh, over the years to come. And I think ultimately, you know, if we just collect this amount of plastic 3,000 times, you know, <laughs> the garbage patch will be gone and uh, will just exist in the, in the history books. And yeah, and I think what we now see with the initial observations you know, we can do this if we just make the system a bit bigger and we have 10 of them out there, we can clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So, yeah, looking back, it's uh, it's been quite a quite a journey. I, mean, I, I thought this would take maybe a few years to get to this point. And uh, now here we are 10 years later. So, and, you know, not just the duration, but also we had some really intense moments, some um, you know, some, some tough periods along the way, too. And uh, yeah, I remember just, just after I learned about this, this Great Pacific Garbage Patch, and yeah, I wanted to learn about it, more about it because I thought, yo, let's go clean this up. And um, yeah, so I, I contacted some people to have conversations with people who had studied the problem already. And you know, all of them told me, you know, forget about it. <laughs> there's, there's no way you can do this. Uh, it's going to be out there forever. Um, you know, it's impossible to, to clean it up. The best thing we could do, great news, the best thing we could do is not make it worse. I thought, like, you know, that's not really great news. I mean, everyone wants the future to be better than the present. So, so I thought it was a pretty, pretty depressing message. So then I thought, you know, let's just give it a try. It's fine with the ocean cleanup. And, you know, of course, from, from the very beginning, you know, we had a lot of doubters. And uh, honestly, I, mean, I think they're kind of right about that because... We really didn't know what we were doing those first, you know, those first years. It's just, um, yeah, we did. And and honestly, I I too doubted many times whether whether we would ever, you know, ever make it, ever get to to this point. We had so many close calls. We had, you know, we almost ran out of money a few times. Uh, we had these tests that 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 kept failing. We um, had these dead ends that we um, encountered with, with actually several concepts that were you know, turned out to be dead ends. So, and, and probably the, the, the low point in all of this was when we took out System 1, Wilson. It was 2018, and we had such high hopes for this machine. I mean, we, we had done so much modeling, so many scale model tests, uh, all these scientific campaigns, expeditions to the patch to try and, you know, model it and understand the problem. And yeah, we took it out and then it didn't collect plastic and then two and a half months later it broke into two. So that was, yeah, it took a lot of work to climb out of that one. And, uh, but yeah, fortunately we, we did. We then launched a uh, second iteration we called System 1B. Yeah, that did collect some plastic, 2019. But um, yeah, that turned out yeah, we will never be able to, to clean the, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch with, with that system. You know, it's, um, it's just not going to scale. It's too small, you would need way too many systems. So, so really at the start of this System 2 campaign, which was um, you know, in, in August of, of this year, a lot depended on the system. It was really, you know, <laughs> stakes were super high. So we took it out, we deployed it, did the first test, in, uh, yeah, just two, two and a half months ago. And uh, this was a two hour test, the first test. And we, we took it out, and there was 100 kilos of plastic in there. And then we were like, okay, if you kind of extrapolate that, 100 kilos in two hours, that's, uh, that's about 1,500 kilos per day. Well, that's 
for this system of this size, that's actually nominal. That's what we would expect. That's that's good. So we're kind of cautiously optimistic, but also, you know, we know <laughs> two hours is not very statistically significant, right? So, uh, so we were careful to not really celebrate that. So then we were excited for the second test. Second test, 12 hours, full night. We took it out, and um, again, 100 kilos. So, yeah, then we kind of went from here to there, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, uh, and and then. So, of course, 100 kilos in 12 hours, it's, it's not very good. And then the uh, camera skiff that's on the system, which uh, is there to monitor for, for protective species, that broke down and we had to debug it. And it actually took almost three weeks to, to get the system back up and running, back out there. During all this time, we were like, oh, well, we have another one of these systems that doesn't work. <laughs> and um, so we deployed it again, this time for a two-day test. And we took it out, and then you know, it was morning, the Netherlands, so I, I, uh, I, I woke up in the morning, and uh, I look at my phone, and I see a bunch of missed calls. I see, uh, I see that uh, I have like 50 text messages, so it's like okay, either something really bad happened there or something really good. So, so I opened it, and then I saw this, this photo of this mountain of plastic on deck. And the <laughs> I mean, I still get, get goosebumps just thinking back about that moment. That was... I don't think I've ever been happier. <laughs> and, uh, that was for sure the the, the best morning uh, of of my life. I mean, seeing that there was just such a relief. And then we did it again, and we did it again, and we uh, did it again. And then we had the amazing 9,000 kilo extraction a few weeks ago, and uh, and now we're here. So so that was sort of in a in a nutshell the the journey we we went through. And yeah, kind of reflecting on this milestone, I think is really something um, everyone around the world can be can be proud of. I think this is really a success for for humanity. I think to me, this signifies an age when um, yeah, we're, we're starting to correct the issues and the problems we ourselves have created. And yeah, you know, these days, I think there's a lot of fatalism going around, especially when you hear people talking about the environment. And I think yes, there are real problems out there. Uh, but hopefully, I think you know, if we can clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, you know, the symbol of you know, everything that's wrong today, uh, I think it's just going to be such an inspiring thing. And uh, yeah, hopefully soon, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch will be this thing you can point to, not as an example of things that are wrong with the world, but really as an example that we can solve the big problems that we're facing today. So, I mean, last but not least, I... Just really want to to thank everyone who's been involved with this project. I mean, the amazing team at the Ocean Cleanup, uh, our friends at Maersk and all our other key partners. Uh, they've really done uh, a, a tremendous job. Um, so really, thank you for for holding on all this time. It's uh, it's been it, you know, it's not been easy as, as I just said, but uh, uh, it's um, yeah, it's it's really been an honor to uh, to work together. And um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's incredible what a like a small group of people that are you know passionate about this that are skilled can can achieve. When you think about the ocean cleanup, we're a small nonprofit. There's 100 people working for us. There's the, just about 25 in the core team for the ocean project. So so it's really kind of a, a tiny group of people who who, who made this uh, who made this possible. I'd also like to use this opportunity to to thank our supporters, our followers who've. You know, who supported us all this way when nothing was working yet, when everyone called us idiots for even trying. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's to this day, I mean, it, it still astounds me to think, you know, this is people who we've never met, just sending us money, sending us support. Uh, that will, you know, that will never get, we'll never get used to that. So, so really, um, you know, big thanks to everyone who, you know, keeps sharing our posts and, you know, has supported us through the first crowdfunding campaign and all these years. It's, um, yeah, it fills me with, with a lot of hope. So, yeah, for now, I think thanks again to, to everyone. Thanks all for you for, for joining us here today. I think this is a, a great day for the ocean. And, uh, yeah, let, let this mark the, the beginning of the end for the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Thank you.